You are now listening to Talk Your Jizz Podcast. Hello, and welcome to Talk Your Jits Podcast. This podcast is, as the name implies, all about jujitsu. My name is Darcel Smith, and I will be your guest host for today's episode. I have the honor of introducing today's guest. He is a black belt who train or who teaches at Agogi Jiu-Jitsu located in Ferndale, Michigan, as well as Endovu Jiu-Jitsu located in Garden City, Michigan. Everyone, please welcome Mr. Lamar Smith. Hello. 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 <laughs> How are you? I am fantastic. It's great to be here. I've never done this before. I was going to say, how does it feel to be on the other side being interviewed? Uh, awkward. <laughs> yes. You don't no, have any cool, questions though. to ask, so you're being asked a question. Um, I'm with it. Before we dive in, just want to say congratulations on your black belt. Thank you. Um, how does Thank it you. feel? It hasn't kicked in yet. It's still still fresh. I got that question a lot. Like, how does it feel to have your black belt? I'm like, I'm just still getting used to being a brown belt. So <laughs> it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a while. But yeah, it's cool. Awesome. Um, so is there anything? I mean, our, your guests pretty much know who you are from the episodes thus far. Um, I don't know if you want to do an intro or a slight little um um uh, yeah uh i don't know uh, i've <laughs> everyone knows who i am at this point uh because I've, I've told the story a hundred it's gonna be a hundred times now but as she said my name is lamar smith i am now officially a jujitsu black belt so uh i don't know what else to else to say that hasn't been heard already so true <laughs> um so i guess we'll just jump right into some questions. Is that okay with you? Let's rock it. All right. So forgive me. I might have to look down occasionally. So just making sure I got all my ducks in a row here. Um, So first question, uh, when and how did your initial interest in martial arts begin? Kung Fu movies. Um, I grew up watching Kung Fu movies as far as back as I can remember. Um, from Bruce Lee to the Shaw Brothers movies, Donnie Yen, Jet Li, Jackie Chan, all of them. And, you know, especially with Power Rangers when I was growing up, that made me really, really dove into it. And yeah, just kind of been that thing I've always wanted to do since I was a kid. Speaking of, uh, we have to ask, who was your favorite ranger and why? Uh, Blue Ranger. The Blue Ranger was my favorite. Um, I guess it was just the fact that he was like, he was to me like the outcast of the group because he was nerdy. He wasn't like the most popular guy, but, you know, a lot of people depended on him because of his smart. So it kind of like, even back then, it kind of made me feel like it was cool to be like a nerd. Yeah, understandable. I get that. Um, next question. Uh, before you were introduced to jujitsu, were there any other forms of martial arts that you wanted to practice specifically? Hmm. Um, I would have to say Muay Thai was one of the main ones that I, I wanted to practice. Even though, even if I like necessarily didn't know the extent of Muay Thai, I just like the name of it. Um, mm-hmm. Karate, I tried karate before, um, but yeah, Muay Thai was always been that that one that I've always wanted to to dive into so much. Um, how? What was your experience with karate? How did you? How did you like that? Um. I, it was kind of okay because I, I, when I did get a chance to train in karate, um, I didn't get a chance to like necessarily like dive uh, deep into it like I did with jujitsu, unfortunately. Um, mm-hmm. So it was always either 
um, the places that I I tried really didn't like vibe with, or I just didn't have the funds to, or just you know this other you know lifely means where I couldn't do it. So who was to say what could have happened if I was able to stick with karate or whatnot? But yeah, vibes are definitely important. Gotta be. Oh yeah. <laughs> Gotta be comfortable, man. You don't want to just be, I can't, I can't see people training as places that's like so uncomfortable. Yeah. Cause you can't concentrate. No, not at all. Um, from your journey at white belt to now at black, what are the top three lessons you have learned that you will never forget? Um, Mm, good question. <laughs> Honestly, just um, one thing for sure is, you know, our our instructor, um, Zachary Holson III, you know, he's, as, as time went on, he became more than an instructor, more like a big brother mentor type deal. And one thing he always instilled was, you know, everyone's journey is different. You know, it's like, you, you kind of have to experience this yourself through your own eyes versus everyone else's. Um, just, and also just being consistent with training, you know, just because one day doesn't go right or the week doesn't go right. Cause you're always going to have those shitty moments, just continue to learn and continue to grow. And one more important thing was, you know, when you walk into a gym, you leave your ego at the door. Cause Definitely. you know, your ego will hinder your growth. And also, you know, it, it will cause you, it will, it just, it does, it doesn't do good for you having an ego. You're going to have one, but being able to leave it at the door and have a good control over your ego is definitely a big, a big thing when it comes to jujitsu. Definitely. And I feel like they might I mean in some cases they can be separate, but I also feel like, how early we were saying how the vibe of a location is, is important. The vibe of everybody else is important. The vibe of the instructor. I feel like that has a lot to do as well with being able to let your ego go. Like if you walk into a place and you feel like, oh, this is, this is pretty cool. Everybody's welcoming. The instructor's cool. Uh, you know, everybody's friendly, willing to work with you. Um, I feel like it's easier to let like your ego go or like let your guard down versus if you walk in somewhere and like everyone's like snotty or like um you know they kind of like it's looked down because you're the beginner or you're the newbie or something then you're kind of like mm, you know mm -hmm. it's a little more it's kind of like that ego is i don't want to say like a, a security blanket in a sense but it's kind of like, I don't know anybody here. It seems like I'm not really vibing well with anybody. So mm -hmm. that ego, you kind of hold on to it. Yeah. I mean, so it's, I think mainly because when you look at, um, you know, people that hasn't necessarily like learned jujitsu or, or necessarily like seen jujitsu, they always get this tendency of, of like the fear of being tapped. You know, no one wants to be, no one wants to be dominated, you know? So um, just like the other day I did a, um, like an open mat type uh, class at the new place I'm gonna be teaching at. We'll, you know, talk about that later. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, one of the guys, he was, he's a wrestler, strong guy. And he just felt like he had to just muscle everything. And I'm like, dude, that's, you're not going to, you're not going to learn nothing that way. Like if you try to muscle out of everything, you're just going to hurt yourself. So he's yeah. like, yeah, man, I just, I just didn't want to tap. I was like, dude, either you tap or something breaks and <laughs> you wish you would have tapped yeah. sooner. So yeah, there egos get you, in, egos this. get you in trouble. There's absolutely no shame in tapping. Nope. I, I <laughs> say it, I say it every single time from the time I've been training when I first started training into now, I don't care what rank you are from white to black. If you tap me, you tap me. It is what it is. It is what it is. Good job. You know? 
<laughs> right. Good job. And if, you, and if you didn't tap me, if you were close, I will let you know. Like, man, you were so close. It's just you had to change this and this and that. So, yeah. But now you know for next time. Right. Um, another question. So imagine you're looking at a large group of students, right? Mm -hmm. What would you be more excited to see? All white belts or all colored belts and why? Uh, I think I would be more excited to see all white belts because depending on if you got people you know different color belts you obviously they have some type of you know some type of experience and knowledge with jujitsu from their you know from their instructors and whatnot so a lot of stuff that you may introduce to them they might think is bs or they just mm -hmm. might you know they might be a little bit more difficult to teach because a lot of people that comes into other schools that's learned a new system doesn't necessarily want to learn the new system. They just want to do it the way they've been doing it. And like, oh, no, this is how I did it when I was training at XYZ and yada, yada, yada. So it's it's hard to untrain somebody to get ready to train them. I you got a room full of, you know, room full of white belts. Everyone is everyone's fresh. Everyone's new. Everyone's like that blank slate that we can mm -hmm. mold and make into something great. Not saying that other schools are not, but in our system and what, how we teach and how we do uh, jujitsu, it, it works out better. Okay. Even playing field. Yeah. Very, very even playing field. Gotcha. Um, so we know jujitsu has the ability to save people, especially when it comes to mental health. Mm-hmm. Um, is there an earlier time in your life that jujitsu would have been a huge benefit to you? You know, I, I, I think about that a lot. Um, I think about like, man, if I, you know, if I had jujitsu back then when I first started to develop anxiety and depression and, you know, really trying to find ways to cope and deal with that, what it makes it any different. But honestly, I feel like jujitsu kind of found its way into my life at the perfect time. Cause you know, it's like, um, I, you know, I talk about this before, um, you know, very, you know, being very transparent, you know, when I was I around, like, I think it's like blue going into purple, you know, we had our, our differences and, you know, stuff was being like very, very shaky and just a lot of stuff that was going on with that. And, I'm like, man, if I was not training to have that outlet, you know, no telling what could have happened to me personally. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I I think about that a lot. Like, man, if I started doing jujitsu earlier, how would my you know mental health be uh, then versus now? But yeah, it, it would probably would have helped, but I don't think it would have had as as a big of an impact as it did now. Hmm. Okay. Um, are there any stigmas surrounding Brazilian Jiu Jitsu that you're aware of that you wish you could remove? Um, this weird, this weird thing about like, you know, every Jiu Jitsu, you know, every Jiu Jitsu player likes to fight off their back or mm -hmm. like, you know, people always feel like Jiu Jitsu does not help in a street fight. And it's, I know, and this is like a dumb stigma. I know we talk about this a lot, but like, especially when you hear like in like in music, people always say like, you know, kick it like jujitsu or whatever. <laughs> like, I'm like, I hate that so much. <laughs> but um, yeah, as far as like, you know, people say like, oh, you know, they like to fight off their back. And it's like, no, we, if we, we do enough to be able to do whatever we, we can standing, but if it does go to the ground, we have a higher advantage mm -hmm. versus, you know, any other type of martial arts. Like, you know, I see it that way. But, you know, when they say, like, oh, you know, jujitsu doesn't work in a street fight. I'm like, well, no, because we've trained that way. We train to, you know, use jujitsu in, you know, in a street fight in real life situations. If you can't do it in the gym, if you can't do it in the street, you can't do jujitsu. 
You know, I've I've seen stories and read stories where a guy gets beat up. You know, he's a jujitsu black bro. He got but he got beat up, but it was like, well, just that's on him. You know, but yeah, that's that's the stigma I hate that like you know it doesn't work in a street fight or you know we only like to fight off our backs. Like no, we can still do jujitsu standing. It's just that it just gets more dangerous when we're on the ground. That is true. That is true. <laughs> um. Is there anything you wish more people knew about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Um, I think right now, well, when it comes to Jiu Jitsu, I it's one of those things where you just have to experience yourself. You know, as you know, we can preach it, you know, to the masses that oh, Jiu Jitsu has so many more health benefits and stuff like that. But I think you would find more of the benefits if you actually sit down and try it. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's that de jujitsu is definitely a more hands-on type of a experience versus me, you know, saying like, Oh man, you can do this, do that, do this and do that. Like, no, you just need to come try it. Like, come try jujitsu, give it a shot and you'll fall in love with it. I promise. <laughs> I know I did. I was um, like, same thing. I've Same thing I've been telling you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as a father to a child, a daughter, especially that's learning jujitsu, um, what impact have you seen in her? And what would you say to parents who might be on the fence about signing their kids up for say a jujitsu class? Um, I can honestly say having my daughter who who trains jujitsu and the fact that she fell in love with it, it's like, you know, it, it makes my heart beat. Um, mm -hmm. But just seeing her, seeing her grow and the confidence that she has gained from doing jujitsu, um, just, just yeah, her, her, you know, her confidence, her self-esteem, how she carries herself. I mean, she's not like, you know, she's not going to go pick a fight, but at the same time, she, she will stand up for herself. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. It, it, it's in any martial art, really, really not just necessarily jujitsu, but, you know, just getting your child into something that they can be involved in, that they can see progression and growth and see themselves change into something that they never thought before with, when it comes to learning a sport or a martial art. So I encourage every parent to at least let their parent, let, let their kids try something, you know, Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay, so we've talked about the benefits of jujitsu. Um, so let's kind of delve on the other side. Let's switch gears a little bit. Um, realistically, okay, uh, what are some honest challenges that a beginner could expect to face? you're not going to get it right the first time. The perfect example I can think of, if you ever watched the Matrix, the first Matrix, when Morpheus and Neo were on the roof and Morpheus jumped across the building and they were like, you know, Neo's supposed to be quote unquote the one. And he's like, you know, what if we make it? And everyone's like, mm -hmm. no, no one makes it the first time. Mm -hmm. And that's how jujitsu is. You're not going <laughs> to get it right the first time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just take that as a, you know, just take that as the biggest advice. Like you're not going to get every single move the first time, because when it comes to jujitsu, it's like you're learning a new language. You're learning how to use your body in you know, more ways than just getting up, walking up and down steps or walking across the street. So you're learning how to use your limbs together versus, you know, just sitting in one spot or like, you know, say walking or stuff like that. So just give it mm -hmm. time. Just you just gotta give it time. Give it. You have to have patience when it comes to jujitsu. Definitely, and I think I'd even say you definitely because of course jujitsu is open to everybody, all ages, all fitness levels. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, but I will say it it definitely teaches you what muscles you don't use often. <laughs> um, because 
I can say when I when I first joined and I started classes, like I, and this is not to deter anybody, of course, this is not to, you know, it's just like when you start uh, an exercise program, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's new, you're working muscles that you normally don't, but I was sore. I, oh, yeah. I, listen, there were muscle groups that I didn't even know were there. Mm-hmm. Until they started hurting the next day, or like the day after, especially. Uh-huh. And I'm like, what? What muscle group is this? Because th- this is new. I don't like this. <laughs> but the more, of course, the more you, the more you train. It's again, it's like exercise. The more you do it, the less strenuous it becomes. You get used to it. So, but yeah, there will be soreness. There will always um, be soreness. <laughs> <laughs> Um, You're everywhere we're hurt all the time. <laughs> all the time. All the time. Um, let me see. Um, so let's take it back to you for a second. Uh, what are some personal frustrations that you've experienced on your journey? Oh, wow. Um, it was quite a few. Like, uh, just you know, feeling stagnant um, at some points in jujitsu. It's like, um, I know, I guess it's just, you know, I just chalk it up to the way that I, I learn, you know, just having, you know, AD, you know, ADHD and I, I'm a more hands-on type person. And I have conversations with people that be like, yeah, man, I was watching this video and they was able to grasp it. And I'll be sitting there looking like, uh, no, I need to do it. You know, I need to you know, <laughs> put my hands on these techniques and not get them. Mm-hmm. And just being able to uh, just keep myself focused enough because you have those days where it's like you just suck. <laughs> you just you just suck so bad. Like, I, like why yeah. am I doing this? I want to take this belt off and start over. But, yeah, I yeah. mean, even up until, you know, you know, my black belt got tied around my waist, there's always going to be difficulties and challenges that, you know, you face and, you know, it went from me learning jujitsu for myself to becoming an, an instructor. So mm-hmm. it's kind of like, oh, snap. Not the fact that not only do I have to worry <laughs> about myself, I have to worry about, you know, six, seven other people that's, you know, hanging on to my every word. And it's like, I got to yep. show what I know. But it's like, damn, I don't know shit. <laughs> <laughs> but right. yeah, I mean, that's, but, you know, that comes with it. It's just, once you get into that mindset of like, okay, this is something new. I'm learning. I'm still growing as an individual. I'm still growing as a martial artist. I'm still, in, in, you know, growing in jujitsu. It just makes it less. Um, it, it, it makes it less frustrating. You just kind of you just kind of learn to roll with the uh, punches, you mm-hmm. know, metaphorically speaking. So. And I think that's important to note as well, because, you know, and this goes, oh, excuse me, this goes across, I think, a lot of different martial arts, but especially in jujitsu, a lot of people have this idea, you know, when they're on the outside that, oh, once you've reached black belt, that's it, you're done. But it's like, no, actually, we're just starting now. Like, we're Yeah, now, that's when you start. Like, yeah. So... Um, there's a there's a journey to get to black belt, and then there's the journey after black belt, um, which is why it's called a journey. Like, there's always going to be something you're always going to be learning. Um, so I think that's a that's a very important point to make as well. Is that just because you have a black belt around your waist? That doesn't mean, you know, they know everything. It doesn't mean that they're going to stop learning. No, um, you're not. It just, you know, it just means that they have a little more knowledge. They've gained a little more knowledge than most or than those of lower belt ranks. But it's attainable. I mean, you mm-hmm. had to go from white to black just like everyone else. So, um but yeah, the, the learning never stops. The challenges never, stops. never stop. No. Because so. like you like you hear like you hear this, like um a lot of people say 
And, you know, my instructor, we, we talk about this a lot. And it's like, when you get the white belt, it's like, you know, you're on this, this, this ground floor and it's like, you see, like, you don't see nothing. You just see just, you know, just darkness. Once you get mm -hmm. the blue belt, you're kind of like, okay, I can kind of see a little bit, yada, yada, yada. Then when you get the purple belt, it's like, okay, I'm seeing stuff. I, I see, I see things now. I can see what I can build here. I can see my foundation. And then brown and kind of black is kind of like a little bit of the same. It's like the refinement when it comes to brown belt. And then once you finally put everything together, it's like, all right, now I can start doing jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> now it's I know like enough. We can put this puzzle together. <laughs> exactly. That is all it is. It's like, okay, now I got the understanding to do jujitsu. Right. And, you know, I got... I got questions like that too, where it's like, you know, people that I, you know, I talk to that know that I'm like, yeah, no, I do jujitsu. And it's oh, okay, what what belt are you? I'm like, oh, I'm a brown belt. And it's like, oh, you know, what's 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 next? You know, how many more belts are they? Like, oh, it's just one, just a black belt. Ah, oh, then it's, you know, would you get your black belt? You're done? Nope. I'm just starting. <laughs> oh, how long there have you been no doing done. it? There is no, there is no done. Like there is no done. It's like you get this belt, and it's like, all right, man. It's like, it's like going to college, studying to be a doctor. You know, once you graduate from, you know, you, you get your doctorate, you still got to go through, you know, your, um, you know, you still got to go through, still train and learn, because you know everything still changes and grow when it comes to, mm -hmm. you know, medicine and stuff like that. You still gotta go to work. You still gotta put that work in. You still gotta, you know, you you mm -hmm. even before you become a doctor, you're a fellow, and then you go through this, and then you become a doctor, and it's like, all right, now I gotta learn everything that the you know that the books didn't teach me. Mm -hmm. Same thing with jujitsu. Like I can I can sit down and study and learn all these techniques, but I still gotta be able to put them together. I still gotta be able right. to work them into my you know my game and my system and whatnot. So yeah, it does not stop at all. It, it keeps going to your last breath. Mm -hmm. And then it keeps going in the afterlife. No. I'll say even um, in the afterlife, I'm still going to be <laughs> still snaking and rolling out here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was, was kind of hesitant about this question only because, um, you know, we already kind of touched on like the, uh, not, I hate to say negative, but like the, Cons, I guess you want to say not cons, but um, do you think that jujitsu can have a negative effect on the body in the long run? Oh yeah, of course. You know, <laughs> you get injured. You know, you mm -hmm. get hurt. You know, like right now, my you know my wrist is messed up. Both my knees are are you know. Are hurting my ankle hurts, shoulder hurt, mm -hmm. back hurts. You know, it's just, it just comes with it. It just comes with it. You know, mm -hmm. you know, once again, talk to my instructor, you know, you know, because we used to work together. He'd be sitting, you know, he'd be watching me and be like, I'll be moving like, I'll be stiff or whatever. And he's like, ah, you're getting your, getting ready for your black belt body. I'm like, no, I don't want this. I don't want, I don't want this. Like, <laughs> You know, I mean, obviously, you know, stuff hurts when you, when you, you know, when you get older, but like, mm -hmm. I think the pains that my body feels now is something that's what we feel like in my sixties and seventies. Like I shouldn't have joint pains. I shouldn't have <laughs> back problems. I shouldn't have, you know, neck hurt. And, you know, every time I wake up, I'm just like, ah, ah, you know what I'm saying? But like just it, stiff, just stiff, man, just stiff. But at the same time, those those wounds that you know those pains and aches man it just, it just reminds you of what you what you accomplished hmm. you know i'm not you know i'm not you know my body is not stiff just from you know just getting older and just sitting around doing nothing you know it's like i feel that twinge in my back it's like oh yeah that was a hard roll yesterday <laughs> or like you know i roll my wrist oh yeah that was gotta, that that grips man i gotta get my grips better and you just kind of find ways to you know, duct tape yourself and hold yourself together and keep go keep going. Definitely duct tape. Yeah. Definitely. Gotta um, gotta learn how to tape yourself up, man. Keep your keep your body together. One thing people will learn is you always must have a jujitsu survival kit. 
Yes, I, I definitely <laughs> do have. I got, I got laughed at. I got laughed at when I brought my jujitsu survival kit to class one day. And next, you know, everybody's like, hey, man, you got some more tape? Like, yeah. Right. <laughs> like, no, right. I get your own. No, I ain't got no tape. You laughed at my bag. Now you suffer. <laughs> I was I going I through it the other day. But not for you. Right. I was going through it the uh, other day. I'm going through it. I was like, oh, I got to get some more tape. I got to get some more finger tape. I got to get some more. So, yeah, got to have it. <laughs> tape, you know, uh, ankle pet. Um, Ankle compressor, knee compressor, wrist compressors, all that stuff. Like you need all that. Um, I think I think the answer to this question has kind of presented itself along the way. But regardless of everything that we just talked about, as far as the potential negatives of jujitsu, do you feel that the benefits outweigh all of that? Oh, of course, hands down. Mm -hmm. Hands down. Um, if we're talking, you know, on the mats, um, you know, it's just, you know, it, it 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 does something to your mind where it's like you you it, it teaches you to focus strictly on jujitsu. Mm -hmm. Like you can't you can't let your outside life um, bother you so much because, you know, there's been so many days where we have our arguments you know, before class. And it's like, I can't let that bother me right now. I can't let, you know, stuff happen at work or, you know, family stuff or, you know, marriage stuff. I can't let that stuff bother me right now because I am in a life or death situation. Because once right. your mind goes somewhere else, you know, you're getting tapped, you're getting, you're getting choked <laughs> out, you, you know, you're dead. So, um, but if we're talking like off the mats from, um, like I said, just helping you, my, like helping me stuff, like deal with stuff mentally and just the camaraderie and family that I've gained from not only doing mm -hmm. jujitsu, from doing this podcast as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I got people from all across the world that I've talked to that's messaged me like, oh, congratulations. They're like, you know, excited, like they were, you know, there <laughs> and like, oh my God, you know, I'm so happy for you. You know, I'm like, dude, like, you know, you just think like I've met you one time. We've talked for like maybe like 45 minutes to an hour, mm -hmm. but we're family now. And you know, mm -hmm. like I said, they they mess me like, you know, congratulations, you know, you know, good job, man. I'm happy for you, blah, blah, blah. I can't wait to meet and roll with you and da-da-da-da. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I, I think that's <laughs> that's one of the I mean, of course, outside of the the mental health benefits, the um the health benefits i feel like that is one of the um other important benefits of jujitsu because i mean at the source of it like literally jujitsu is like one big family like yeah. i don't yeah. like, it doesn't matter where you train if it's within the united states if it's another country like there is there's a certain bond that comes with being in jujitsu like if you if you meet another person doing jujitsu, there's like, what is it? The, the, the what, uh, yeah, the, what's the it? Hand side? Yeah. So it's like, it's like, a, I don't even know if I want to call it like a symbol, but I guess in a sense it is where it's just like, you know, it's basically like a wave or like a, mm -hmm. it's like, um, I don't know how else I would put it, but it's I mean, just because, that, you know, because yeah, that originated from, you know, from, when they started bringing jujitsu over to you know over from brazil to the united states everyone kind of landed in you know in florida so mm. it's kind of like that surfer surfer thing you know that hang 10. Yeah. so you know because brazilian people they love to surf they love the water they love you know and everything about it so that mm -hmm. kind of became the sign for jujitsu <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's just it's and I don't even know if there are words that can describe it because it's like, you know, you have, you know, your own family, you know, the family you're born into, the family that you make, if you have like a wife, kids, you know, you have that. But then to know that you, you know, you start jujitsu, you make that decision and just from jump, like automatically you are now welcomed into just a huge family pretty much yeah 
Yeah. Like everyone, you know, they congratulate you. They encourage you. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's a good feeling to know that, you know, I may not have met you personally, but we have this certain thing that connects us. And because of that, you're my brother, you're my sister, you're, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I think that's like a really good, especially, uh, especially for people that may not have had the best time growing up, like say they have a broken family or uh, mm -hmm. um, whatever the case. So I feel like to know that you can go from that to now having a family that you're not even blood related to, but you feel like you could be. Yeah. Even so. down to, like I talked to, you know, like the people that I met, you know, met through the podcast and, you know, we're all friends on Facebook mm -hmm. and we'll be talking about like tournaments out of state and say, like, oh mm -hmm. yeah, you know, it's a tournament, you know, here, if you ever down here, man, you got a place to stay. It's like, See? I don't even know you, but you know, <laughs> and even one guy, he he's from Canada and it was, you know, um, a tournament that was going to be here, and he messaged me he's like, "Hey, man, if I come down, would it be cool to stay at your plot?" You know, I'm like, "Hell yeah, come on!" <laughs> <laughs> you know, knowing damn well, I would never let you know just a guy walking up the street and be like, "Hey, you know, can I stay at your place right. tonight?" Like, ew, no, creep, get away. Right. This guy does jitsu. Right. This guy does jitsu. He's family. Come on. Right. Here. Exactly. Right. Fridge is um, over there. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> So I have a few more. Um, mm -hmm. Well, one more, and then we'll kind of get into some like favorites, I guess. Um, and then I guess after that, we can kind of delve into more of uh, Agogi and Indovu, if that's okay. Okay, it's perfect. Um, perfect. So my last question. Uh, so your journey from, I believe it was from blue to purple was extremely challenging for numerous reasons yes yes right um would you say that you had a least challenging um journey between belt colors um and i know that it's probably worded weird because i mean every belt rank has some level of difficulty to it because you know you're adding more techniques more uh, more time rolling. So, I mean, they all come with their own difficulties and challenges, but I guess compared to your journey from blue to purple, if you were to use that in comparison, would you say you had a color that was a little least, least difficult? Honestly, I would have to say from white to blue hmm. was, I guess you want to say like the least challenging because, um, you know, it's it's it was it was something fresh. It was something new, mm -hmm. and I think once you kind of like, you know, you you graduate from that white belt to what some people and we call it like the varsity white belt, um, <laughs> you still you're still new. You're still fresh in the game. You're still you know you're still that sponge, and yeah. you're not necessarily having jujitsu, you know, just you know just overtake your life like that yet. You mm -hmm. still like ah, it's, you, you know, we, we're kind of seeing, you know, what it does because, you know, I've talked to you, you know, personally about this, and you know, I've even showed you like statistics and stuff like that where a lot of people get their blue belt and quit. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was talking to my instructor about that. I was like, you know, why is that? Why is that such a big? Another stigma is like, was that a big thing in jujitsu where people get their blue belts and just stop? Mm -hmm. And he was saying because typically people that don't like do that, they have really, really never accomplished much in life. Not saying they, you mm -hmm. know, not saying like in that sense, but like mm -hmm. once you get this 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 promotion, everyone's like, okay, I feel satisfied, I feel accomplished, I got my blue belt, and they just kind of like just disappear. Mm -hmm. You know, we're taking we're taking out like you know you know family issues, health issues, whatever whatever reason, but just like the kind of bare bones thing about it is they just stop because they already feel accomplished. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I never felt that. Mm -hmm. As soon as like, you know, as soon as I got my blue belt, 
I was already in the mindset of like, oh, if I could get my blue belt, I'd get my purple. <laughs> and then once I got my mm-hmm. purple belt, it was like, oh, man, I, I just survived this. I thought I'd get my brown belt. And, and so now look so where forth. we are. And now look where we are, <laughs> you know? And, you know, got that black belt around the waist now. But, <laughs> yeah, I think, the, yeah, I think the, I guess you want to say, like, the easiest road was from white to blue. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Um. Oh, so I guess now we can enter, I guess, a little favorite section. Um, just a couple. Um, what is, what would you say your favorite attack is? I've grown to love the front face lock. Mm. Um, it's, I don't, I don't, I don't, I can't explain where that came from. You're but I think you said what? Because <laughs> you're a savage. It, it happens in jujitsu. You just it just happens. You know. <laughs> you get that thirst for blood. You know it. Is. <laughs> no, but I think that's I think that's been kind of like you know everyone has their kind of like go to move, and I just it just kind of like one day clicked on like clicked to 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 do that because I think I know I know once he hear this he, he's not gonna let me hear the end of it but dealing with one of our training partners Coleman who's being like you know he's strong wrestler guy so it was just like trying to figure out ways to slow him down and I think just um watching videos and dealing and just finding you know just finding articles about you know dealing with stronger people and one of the things that was coming up was that you know front face lock and just all of a sudden my YouTube is just like full of you know <laughs> different techniques and front face locks. So I was like, all right, let me just kind of play around with that. So that's kind of been my go-to now. And it's been trying to now is just trying to develop ways to get it from every other like every position, you know, mm-hmm. from standing from you know, even from bottom side, um, even you know, from someone in my guard, someone in mount, just mm-hmm. Finding ways to get that front face lock. <laughs> so that's kind of been my been my favorite as of the last year, I should say. Hmm. Okay. Um, what would you say is your favorite submission? Guillotine. Obviously from the you know from face lock, but guillotine and I want to say bread cutter has been my two favorites. Bread cutter has been my favorite for a while. But yeah. yeah, that that guillotine, the army guillotine, or and yeah, and bread cutter has been my favorites. Okay, um, favorite takedown. Um, I guess you. I don't know necessarily say if it's a takedown per se, but just mm-hmm. you know, just. You know, being able to get my opponent under me and just sinking my weight down and just breaking their bodies down. Just yeah, just basically using my weight to get them down. And also, um, it's like this inside leg, it's like this inside leg sweep where if we're clenched up together, I kind of like wrap my leg around your leg and just kind of like dive forward. Cause I'm I'm you know, my you know, takedowns are a little still iffy for me. I'm still trying to like learn how to mm-hmm. get to them better. Um, Mm -hmm. but I feel like once I'm able to get to the inside, that inside leg sweep has been bring that bread and butter for me for, for a little bit. Okay. Um, what is your favorite guard pass? I'm exposing myself out in these streets. That's what she's trying to do. (laughs) (laughs) Don't worry. We'll, We'll use the little flash thing from men in black. It'll be, it'll be cool. I know we got to neuralize it. I can't even. I can't even post this episode. I'm gonna have to bleep all this out. <laughs> nah, but um, favorite guard pass. Um, you know it's our it's our favorite man. It's that it's that smash pass. I love mm-hmm. I love the setup. I love seeing the life. You know, just seep out of people's bodies, being folded in half, like you know, like a like some old like some like some fresh clean laundry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and like when she, once she finally passed, you hear that. <sighs> <laughs> so, mm-hmm. I love it. That's, yeah, that's um, my favorite. I was gonna say even when, like, when you're setting it up and you're in that, you have them folded right where you need to. Um, 
Because I know sometimes you will keep it there for a little while. Mm-hmm. Just to, and it's like, I don't know if it's just, if it's a, if it's your cue, I don't know if it's like a, like a, a signal for you, but you hold it there and it's not until you hear that person grunt in discomfort where you're like, oh, I guess I'll let you down now. Like, yeah. but you hold it until it's like you, you either hear it or you see it in their face. And yeah. then it's kind of like, oh, okay, you've suffered enough. Yeah, I'll let you go now. Yeah, because you know <laughs> you won't we, go we, far but <laughs> like we burn you know we don't we don't we don't pass guard we punish mm-hmm. and that's one of the things that we you know we always say like be slow methodical you know and where there's, there's no rush i'm on top you know i can take my time right and especially you know if you if you have that person that's that's real real scrappy and really ready to go once you get to the, like because you once you do the smash pass, you're not folding them at the waist, you're folding them at the diaphragm. So you're folding them under the rib cage. So mm-hmm. they need, so it's like you're the they're trying to breathe, but the more mm-hmm. they exhale, the tighter the the fold get. And it's so hard yeah. to ex, you know, to to try to get that get that that deep breath. So it's like they're fighting, 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 fighting. Mm-hmm. And then at the point, it's like you just feel their body just you just start to sink into the abyss. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> now it's time. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Do you have a favorite snake? A favorite snake? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. or shrimp, as some people call them. I'll say or shrimp, some people call it. <laughs> um, not particularly. I okay. don't. Because, you know, it's it's like we learn them all. We learn mm-hmm. as I don't even know how many there is now in our system. I think it's like 25 or something like that. Um, can I show you 25 of them? No, because I only seen <laughs> 13 of them, something like that. But, mm-hmm. um, yeah, you just kind of learn how to just just mesh them together. You'll start one and end somewhere else. So mm-hmm. I would just say, I you know, I could be like, you should like, oh, I love them all. But. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so you can't really narrow it down to a favorite uh, snake. Would you say there was a favorite one that you learned, like you enjoyed learning it? Um, honestly, one of the you know, it's, it's, it may sound crazy, but the back row. Yeah, because you do that all day now. Like yeah. you literally <laughs> will back row from. You could take a step and it would get you the same distance, but you choose to back roll and just be fancy and yeah, <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely your favorite. Two steps will get you the same length of of, of where you gotta go, but no, you'll just you just you know I, back roll. The funny thing about <laughs> that, I was still this is when sprint was still around, and mm-hmm. I did it at work. We were, I was setting up the um the displays and I was just sitting there, you know, sitting in my, you know, that little this combat base style, and I was, you know, fixing the stands. And I could have easily just put my hand on the table, stood up, and just just unconsciously just rolled to my feet. And they were they did like, like they looked over at me like, what is you doing? I was like, don't worry about it. <laughs> it's no worry about it. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, between the two, what would you choose, or what what do you prefer, full mount or side control? Side control. You have you have you know you have more access to the whole entire <laughs> body versus being in you know full mount where you just kind of have to focus on the top half. So mm-hmm. side control. Um. And then between the two, do you prefer or would you prefer a breath choke or a blood choke? This might to sound sadistic, man, but I I love I love a good blood choke. Sets in faster. Yeah, it sets in, and it's like you know, it's like you you struggle and you struggle, and it's like no 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 no, it's time to go to sleep. It's time to go to sleep. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I could I could see that. Um, so that was it for that. Um, I guess we can go into uh, how we, I guess, got into uh, Agogi and mm-hmm. uh, Ndovu. 
if you'd like. Sure, sure, sure. So, um, yeah, so we, you know, I'm not going to go into too much detail about it, but unfortunately, we know we had to shut down our main school, uh, no, our, our school, the H2O. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that me and my training partner, brother, whatever you want to call him, so many labels, uh, Brian, he was, um, he always had this name, Agogi. And because he, he loves he loves history and knowledge, you know, the, the, the history behind everything. So mm -hmm. when you hear the name, name Agogi, what it was, it was a place where Spartans trained. You know, that's where they, mm -hmm. they trained to become warriors. They, you know, they, they became a, a family and whatnot. And that's how jujitsu is. You know, you 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 meet up mm -hmm. at this place with these people and you you grow into like you said, you, you grow into a family, you grow into this this camaraderie and brotherhood that you would never have found if you never joined. Mm -hmm. So that's where the name Agogi come from. So it's spelled A A G O A G O G E, but he changed the E to an I for you know gi, like for what we wear in jujitsu. So mm. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. like that. I like that. Um, and I guess how. How have things been so far with Agogi? Has it been kind of, I mean, obviously everything new is slow to start, you know, mm -hmm. um, but how would you say progress is going, um, you know, with everything? Um, it's been, it's slow and steady, slow and steady. Uh, we're, you know, we've, we've, um, we, we've just been so fortunate and blessed to meet, uh, I guess he wants you call him a brother now. His name is Kurt. Uh, he runs Boombox Studio, uh, Kickboxing and the Martial Arts, which is located in, in uh, Ferndale, where we, uh, I guess you want to say, partner with him to teach jujitsu at his school. And he's just been, you know, very, very extremely awesome and helpful and um, whatnot. So it's the 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 vibe that we got from him and the vibe we got from his place is just how we were at H2O. So when we mm -hmm. made that transition from H2O to over to there, it just felt like we just we were still the same spot. Mm -hmm. So it's been cool, man. You know, we we we've gained some some of his students and we're you know slowly continuing to grow and whatnot. So it's it's been it's been cool, it's been pretty cool so far. Awesome. Okay. Um <clears throat> obviously as time goes on, you know, we're hoping to expand and Mm -hmm. You know, of course, but right now we're just kind of taking it slow, seeing what how what sticks, what doesn't. Yeah, pretty, yeah. pretty much, man. Just you know, it's black. You know, from like you know, brown and black belt is just like the trial and error stages of becoming instructors now because we 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 learning the business side of you know the business side of jujitsu. So mm -hmm. yeah, we just kind of just throwing stuff at the wall and see what sticks. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then about Indovu. Now, how did that come to be? Um, I you know it may not be a surprise, but you know I have a big love for elephants. Um, and when I was trying to come up with the name for my for my school, <laughs> um, I was trying to I was trying to figure out different ways to incorporate the elephant into the name because I I love what elephants. Uh, signify and just searching, 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 searching. And I came across Indovu, which is basically Swahili for elephant. So mm -hmm. I just like, you know, cause I was trying to like, okay, what can I say to, <clears throat> you know, to represent what an elephant means, you know, family, pride, this, this and that, this and that, this and that. And I just mm -hmm. didn't want to be like, you know, elephant jujitsu or right. <laughs> pachyderm jujitsu, mammoth jujitsu, great tusk mm -hmm. jujitsu. So many names that's kind of just, you know, just didn't, it stuck, but it didn't flow right to me. And then I land on Indovu and I'm just like, oh, I like that. I like that. <laughs> so okay. that's, you know, I, it's, it's, a, it's a baby, you know, it's, it's, you know, our first class is at uh, where I'm going to be teaching at the, the building, I guess you want to say is called um, the Marshall Yard, which is located in Garden City. Um, there was, you know, they're a full blown facility, like whatever, Whatever you want to learn is there. Uh, you know, okay. we started jujitsu there probably the beginning of November. They have, 
you know, uh, kickboxing, they have MMA, they have boxing, they have a full gym. So whatever you want to learn is there. So I'm just, I'm really excited to grow this into, you know, grow it just as how, you know, just how we did with H2O, just how we did with, you know, how we're doing with a gogi and see what, see what that, that brings us. Um, of course, same, same thing. Like we haven't, so you said those should start roughly November. Yeah. As, so as of now, like, yeah. So, well, right now a Gogi, we've been going on since, uh, October, uh, the beginning of mm -hmm. October and, you know, over at, at, at Boombox, but at Martial Yard with Indobu Jiu Jitsu, that should be starting very, very soon. I'm, I'm, I'm shooting for the beginning of November. So. Well, yeah, the beginning of November. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that that I think like the seventh, which is like that that Tuesday, which would be the first class. But we're still working working the schedule and kinks out. But yeah, very very soon, very soon. Okay. Um. Anything else, I guess, that you would like to add? Um. Regarding. Any of this, any of your, you know, versus either a Gogi and Dovu or like any future um, plans, ideas to just keep the jujitsu ball rolling, even with the podcast. Like, is there any anything or any ideas brewing? Um, always, always. There's always something. I'm always trying to figure out ways to uh, keep this, keep this fresh, keep this going. Um, you know, like I said, we're we're steady growing a gogi jujitsu. We're gonna start, you know, molding and shaping in dovu jujitsu. Um, I do plan on competing a lot next year. Um, Very good. You know, when I found out that at grappling industry, black belts uh, mm -hmm. compete for free, I was like, oh, it's it's show this it's game time now. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, just you know, just continue to teach, continue to develop myself, to uh, continue to grow. Um, as far as the podcast, you know, just continue to rock it out, man. It's, it's been, you know, a blessing to be able to hit 100 episodes, which I feel like was just in a matter of days. You yeah. know, you know, we just hit officially hit a year. So, you know, happy birthday to Talk Your Just Podcast. It's, you know, it's Definitely. one years old. So, um, <laughs> yeah, just like I said, just continue to grow and continue to flourish into what is what's been a very very awesome journey okay um now you mentioned competing mm -hmm. um any any events coming up yet that you kind of have your eye on or that's still to be determined when everything else kind of settles um kind of in the middle um Cause I think the first tournament for grappling industries is, is in January. Mm -hmm. So I figure like if that should be enough time to get where we getting um, a Gogi, you know, on the right track, just kind of get Indovu on the right track. Um, mm -hmm. And then by that time I should be able to see where I'm at um, as far as mental and also, you know, training my, you know, training for myself to, Get ready mm -hmm. for these tournaments because you know competing at black belt you know this is kind of this is where the big dogs at so <laughs> i want to be able to go in and you know show show my skill and you know be be ready be very be mm -hmm. very more ready than i've ever been when it comes to competing okay um let's see um thought i had something and then it disappeared <laughs> um hmm. I guess is there anything else that you would like to um add any more updates um Well um first and foremost man I would like to shout out you know the um everybody who's been you know supporting me this whole entire time uh shout out to Kurt over at Boombox for you know giving us the the ability to continue doing jujitsu. Mm -hmm. uh, my 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 fellow black belt 
uh, Brian, who will be on a, a later episode. We're going to talk about that. Um, yeah, you know, our, my, our instructors, uh, Zachary Holson III, man, you know, this wouldn't be possible without him. Um, even the mm -hmm. stuff that he's facing, he still was, um, you know, more worried about us than himself. And, you know, I, I love and appreciate him for Definitely. that. Um, shout out to everyone at Boombox, to, uh, not, not Boombox, but um, at the Marshall Yard, you know, those guys who were, you know, very excited to you know, get started with jujitsu program. So we definitely going to be talking to them and talking a lot more about that soon. And, you know, also my special, my special host today, my wife, and, you know, she, <laughs> you know, she was so nervous about doing this and she, oh, she did an amazing job. So, you know, I definitely appreciate you for, you know, doing this, doing this today. Of course. Um, so I think one did pop back up real quick, just to end. Um, I know that you've done a couple seminars here and there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, you just had one recently um, at the Marshall Yard. Mm -hmm. um, any, of course, would you like to do more seminars? Is that, of course. Is that something you? Of course. Okay. Yeah, hands down. Like I, I'm, <laughs> I'm always open to do seminars. Um, I know there's a couple, couple guys from the podcast who asked me to do one. Um, so just. I'm ready. To, I'm ready to see to explore jujitsu, man. You know, do something out of state. Just as, mm. take this as far as I can possibly can. Okay. So, um, I'm sure a lot of your listeners um, are uh, very much aware. Um, they can reach out via you know your social media platforms. Um, is that a preferred method of say if they would want you to come do a seminar at a gym or at um at any of their locations is that a good reliable way to reach out yeah you know you, you know everyone who's you know has been following me they know you know talk your just podcast you can just type it up um you know on the website you can use all my social media links are there you can reach me on there um yeah just reach out i'm 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 ready excited <laughs> He's got to put that black belt to even better use. So got to, got to, got to put it to work. Got to put it to work. <laughs> um, well, I think that's all for me. I don't really have anything else to ask or add. Um, so yeah, thank you for letting me interview you for our 100th episode. Um, the pleasure is all mine. Um, and I think, I think we're good. Yeah, man. Now, like I said, I thank you for taking the time out and doing this, man. And, you know, I guess I'll do the sign off, but, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, man. I'll be, you know, guys enjoyed, uh, you know, my, my wonderful wife here who did an amazing job of interviewing me, which is, which is weird being interviewed on your own show. But, um, of course. you know, this is something I was actually excited for the closer and closer I got to it. I was trying to figure out what to do for the hundredth episode. So I figured I'll let her take the helms and, uh, you know, rock it out. And she did an amazing job, but, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys, you know, learned something from it. Um, you know, please go and follow our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube page to stay up to on our future episodes. This has been Talk Your Jits Podcast. Remember, keep rolling, keep grinding, and remember, long live jujitsu. Have a great day. <laughs>